Hey everyone, welcome back to The Coop with Meyer Hatchery, where we talk all things poultry in hopes of educating chicken keepers and inspiring future flock owners. I'm Amanda, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Kelsey with Green Willow Farm. Kelsey is a first-generation female farmer, crazy chicken lady, and sustainability advocate. Before diving into the homestead lifestyle, Kelsey lived a much different life as an actress and film producer. Feeling that tug in her heart to reconnect with a true sense of home, Kelsey now farms 80 acres of forest and pasture in Northwest Wisconsin with her husband. As Kelsey is entirely self-taught, she now offers down-to-earth insights, including a blog, podcast, eBooks, online courses, and DIY chicken coop plans. Hey, Kelsey, thanks so much for joining me here on the Coop Podcast today. Yes, thank you so much for having me, Amanda. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I was doing a little reading on your backstory, and I found it really interesting. You kind of took a dramatic turn to the homestead lifestyle. You went from being a big city actress and producer to now raising your own food. Can you tell us a little bit more about that journey? Oh, for sure. So growing up, my two best friends had farms and one had a more big conventional farm with, you know, corn, soy and cattle. And then the other had a more small hobby farm, you know, goats, horses and a cute little kitchen garden. So nearly every day after school was spent at either of those farms. And I think that's what gave me the farm bug from an early age, even though I grew up in the burbs. But through those two girls friendships, I got involved in 4-H, which is ironic what got me involved with performing arts and production and photography, all that stuff. So while I pursued a Bachelor of Fine Arts and Acting and Photography for college, I was also really into classes and subjects that involved the local food movement, things called transition towns, which are about like self-sufficient towns and lessening our carbon footprint. So after I graduated, I did the thing. I toured nationally as a professional actor. I worked as a film producer, like you said. I was a professional photographer, but I got really burnt out. I was so ready for this change of pace as I got into my late 20s. And I I looked around at my life. I felt this undeniable pull to reconnect with that sense of home. And when I stopped to ask myself, you know, what is that? What is home for me? I had my inner child yell out, on a farm. (laughs) <laughs> so I, I just started researching and reading everything that I could about getting started with chickens and how to garden, how to grow food without chemicals. And as I gained a deeper understanding of how the quality of the food we eat is directed directly affected by how it's raised, my passion shifted from being just, you know, an educated consumer to wanting to become like a sustainable producer and grow my own food and all that jazz. So I found my footing as a small scale female farmer on my first farm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where my husband and I, we raised pastured hens on five acres. We had a little roadside farm stand. It was so much fun. And then in early 2020, my husband and I decided to move to Northwest Wisconsin to be closer to our families. So we now have a beautiful 80 acre farm, it's just gorgeous, forest, pasture, the whole thing. So over the years, I've just taught myself how to grow and preserve food, how to raise chickens, make kombucha, all that good stuff. And, you know, taking full responsibility for my food, I, I feel like it connected me to the earth in a way that I really I hadn't experienced before. And I will never forget the very first meal we grew and raised everything on that plate ourselves. It was such a great moment for me. I, I finally understood what it meant to have a relationship to the food that I ate, both plant and animal. And, you know, I can totally relate to your story because I grew up in the big city, um, not near farmland. And I just had this yearning inside of me to want to know where my food came from, want to grow my own food, raise my own animals. And um, so we took the big leap and moved to the country and started our homestead. Um, But I think it's important to know, like so many people think it's like, either you live in the city or you live on a big farm, there's stepping stones and it's okay to walk those stepping stones to get to the final result. Um, I agree. I agree. And then too, like 
homesteading exists in urban areas too. And people do it on their rooftops. They do it on their balconies. Like when you're growing food for yourself in any capacity, you are just a homesteader. You can say it. <laughs> you can yeah. own it. I think the definition of homesteading is kind of skewed. Like, you know, it's either one way or another. And homesteading can be so many different things. Like you said, it could be on a rooftop or in a city garden. You could do so much with just a little bit of dirt. Mm-hmm. I agree. So now that you have your big 80 acre farm or homestead, what types of poultry do you raise and which are your favorites? So we currently raise chickens and I have a variety of breeds. I have the olive eggers, Easter eggers, copper morans, Wyandots, Australorps, and then mutts because we hatch our own chicks, which is one of my favorite things to do. My favorite breed personally is the Wyandotte. I feel like they are the sassy drama queens of the like chicken world. Um, They make great mothers too. And they just have the most gorgeous feathering. I love the patterns that those Wyandots have on their feathers. That's awesome. Now we recently partnered with you to offer some of your A-frame coop plans, which I think are just phenomenal. I am a a chicken tractor DIY girl myself. It's just my cup of tea. Um, So how did that come to fruition? I mean, was it like a project, like you were running out of space for your chickens and you had to build something or was your current build not working for you? How did these A-frames come about? Yes, I would love to share this story with you. So I'm going to take you back to 2016 when I started out with my very first flock of hens. So, you know, months of research are going into owning this very first flock. And through that research, I knew that free range and pastured hens were the happiest and healthiest hens. And I'm sure your listeners know, but in case they don't, free range and pastured means the chickens have free access to the outdoors, but they also get to be on the grass so they can eat all the bugs and plants, herbs, whatever that they their little hearts desire. So the two problems that I ran into immediately, and I think this is what most backyard chicken owners face, is first, my chickens never failed to stray a bit too far and get on the wrong side of the fence and into our neighbor's yards or their flower beds, which was not pretty. (laughs) (laughs) Chicken owners, no, chickens and flower beds do not mix. Uh, No, they do not. (laughs) So I would open the coop door every morning, offering them, you know, the free range freedom, but then I would find myself checking on them every hour. It would disrupt my day. I worked from home. You know, I was, I was just constantly stressed out that the hens would wind up in some sort of mayhem or trouble. And then the second issue is safety from predators. When hens free range all day, they're completely completely exposed to any sort of chicken eating predator and the lengthy list of predators hens face when they free range. I mean, that's hawks, eagles, raccoons, dogs, coyotes, possums, weasels, cats. And you know, that's just here in Wisconsin as, as we've had more people build our A-frame chicken tractors, people will ask us about boa constrictors. I'm just like, I don't know, about boa <laughs> constrictors. but there are, that list is long, those chicken predators. So After a few weeks of free ranging my my very first flock, my heart just sank one day. I came out to check on my girls and I found feathers and blood everywhere. And I did a head count and two of my girls were missing. And I knew something had been through my flock. So thus began this conundrum that most, like I said, most backyard chicken owners face. Do you let your hens free range and take the risk of a predator attack? Or do you keep them cooped up all day and they're safe, but you're limiting their diet and their happiness. So that's when I came across the concept of a chicken tractor, meaning it's a chicken coop that moves. So I would do this research online and I realized three things very quickly as I was trying to figure out what exactly it was that I wanted. First, the designs available on the internet, if I wanted to purchase an A-frame chicken tractor that was ready to go, meaning we didn't do any DIY, I was looking at forking over over like a thousand dollars. And I started backyard chickens to cut costs, not splurge. So buying some sort of ready-built chicken tractor brand new was just not an option for us. Second, the chicken tractor designs that I found online were so ugly. (laughs) 
<laughs> just like <laughs> they use things like plastic tarps, you know, that I knew I was like, that's going to tear in a matter of months. I'm going to have to spend money over and over again, replacing that tarp. Or they were just eyesores. And I, I knew my neighbors would not appreciate them. So I wanted something beautiful. I wanted something built to last, but I kept coming up empty handed. So the third thing that I kept coming up against was the mobility of the chicken tractors I was looking at. I'm 135 pounds. I'm five foot four. You know, I consider myself strong, but some of these chicken tractors I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to move that every day. I wanted to move my flock to this fresh patch of grass or plants or a piece of the garden every single day. So I didn't want something that was going to be bulky or pulled on sliders even. I wanted something easy, something that was going to be mobile. But like I said, I kept coming up short. So my wonderful husband, he's watching patiently as I continue to get more and more frustrated. All the while, you know, I'm still letting my flock free range. I'm trying to like balance these emotions. <laughs> then I lost two more hens and my favorite rooster to that hawk. Oh, no. And I was just, I was at the end of my rope. I told my husband in tears, I was like, I don't think I'm cut out for chicken owning. I can't do this. I can't keep losing hens. My heart can't take it. And I, I can't keep them cooped up. I just know, I know what's best for them. They should be able to roam. So then he sat me down and he was like, okay, what would you build if you could do it completely from scratch? So I started to draw out on just graph paper, what I saw in my head and my husband using his, he's got a decade of experience of an, as an engineer he helped me design this idea. So we walked through all the basic predator scenarios we'd encountered and how best we could mitigate them with a design. And we also talked through like my daily workflow with feeding and watering, gathering eggs. And we made further design tweaks that would make my life as a chicken mama a lot easier. So using this pencil and paper design, my husband goes to work on CAD and he drafts this design in like a 3D model, it was so cool. And then a trip to Menards and one Amazon order later, we built our very first A-frame mobile chicken tractor. And I want to say that first build took us about 20 hours in total, but my husband is a very like adept woodworking guy. Like he knows what he's doing. I would just be like holding pieces while he was <laughs> measuring cut. Um, so, you know, once friends and neighbors saw that DIY chicken tractor, we just, we would get asked repeatedly, share those plans, share those designs with others. You know, they want to see what, if they could build it themselves. So we compiled a PDF of step-by-step -step instructions. We included all those diagrams. We took pictures. We even did a few videos. And then in 2019, after we'd sold, I think it was a thousand of the mega chicken tractor. That was our very first one. We decided to expand and now we offer three different sizes based on the size of your flock. So to date, we've sold over 3000 chicken tractor plans all over the world. That is amazing. I'm, you know, yeah. as you're talking, I'm reminiscing over our first chicken tractor build and I'm pretty strong. I couldn't move it. My husband is super strong. He couldn't move it. We have to use a zero turn lawnmower to move that sucker. Yeah. It's just so heavy. And then the next model was a little lighter, but still too heavy to move yep. as frequently as we wanted. So I, I love how you have designed something that is movable. And I mean, work smarter, not harder. If it's easy to move, yes. you're going to move it more often and your birds are going to be happier. Agreed. I could not agree more. So we talk about chickens with your tractors. Do you think that other types of poultry could benefit from your tractors as well? You know, so the tractors are designed specifically for hens. I want to be very transparent about that, but that has not stopped our amazing customers for using our chicken tractor design for everything from ducks to quail to rabbits. And I, I personally don't have experience or knowledge using our tractors for animals other than hens, but I know that our customers have loved using our tractors for other livestock. And I do want to add that this year we're planning on creating using that same A-frame mobile uh, design for a pygmy goat tractor. Uh, we got started with Nigerian dwarf goats last year, and we really want to rotationally graze them, and we want to have a mobile structure. So we're like, well, why not kind of reconfigure this A-frame design, but do it specifically for goats? So I just wanted to drop that little Easter egg for anybody who's a goat lover and thinking about getting started with goats. We'll be moving into the goat realm. <laughs> I'm going to add my for... name to that list. We've got okay. goats as well. Uh, I'm totally on board with that. That's amazing. <laughs> 
All right. So let's talk about the benefits of raising chickens in a tr chicken tractor system. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to share some of the big ones. So like I said, predator pressure is a non-issue now that we house our flocks in these A-frame chicken tractors. We live in a massive wildlife co corridor and we see everything from like bald eagles to coyotes. But since housing our hens in the chicken tractors, we have yet to lose a single one. Um, which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. And then, you know, I know your listeners know pastured hens are healthy hens. So we get to move them to a fresh patch of grass every day. And I, since we work from home, I move them twice a day. I just love to see them get all excited about like the next patch. So cute. Eating all the bugs. Then again, easily movable and turnable. This design has a really unique wheel setup that we, we went through a lot of variations until we found the one that would stand the test of time and that I could move. I just get behind these mega chicken tractors. Our biggest size is eight foot by 10 foot. And I can just push this thing right across the grass. Feeling it's like amazing. the Hulk. <laughs> yes. <Raw. laughs> yes. Another I thing I really, really like is that there's exterior nesting box access. I don't have to like walk through the chickens or like try and get the door open and closed so nobody gets in and out. Just open up that exterior nesting box and gather eggs. It's such a breeze. And you know what else then, I love about tractors is yeah. your birds are fertilizing your pasture as you're moving them along. So yes. Their area stays clean because you're moving them to a fresh spot all the while as you move them, they're fertilizing your pasture. Exactly. That was going to be my next point is <laughs> you also, the flip side is that you don't kill your grass. So you can move and the, you know, heavy nitrogen chicken manure doesn't burn your grass up because it doesn't accumulate that way. And I think we've seen like huge improvements in our grass over the last couple of years using these chicken tractors. So I definitely second that. And then a lot of people ask, can you winterize the tractors as one of the features? And the answer is yes. We've had tons of customers winterize the tractors. And in doing so, we've developed a whole section in the guide that talks you through, walks you through how you can winterize, how you can insulate, how you can set up a little bit of like a chicken like warming pad, no heat lamps, but a little chicken warming pad in there for them to roost and stay nice and cozy through those winter months. And we live in zone four. So we have kept chickens in the chicken tractors through the winter. We just had actually a bachelor pad of roosters that I hatched <laughs> out and I just can never bring myself to butcher because they're so beautiful. I just slowly find them home. So we keep them in the chicken tractors together and we had them in the chicken tractor through half this winter until I rehomed all of them. And they did just fine with the winterization that we recommend. Well, that's good and to then, know that they're versatile for all climates. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you probably don't want to use it in Alaska. But <laughs> that's, that's a little extreme. <laughs> yep, yep. I say, I say no colder than zone three is my, my go-to when people ask about like, how cold could it get with these tractors? But that's not to say you can't use the tractors in the summer, the spring and summer, and then transition them to something more temporary and warm during the winter. And that's, that is what we do with our hens. Like I said, we had the bachelor roosters in the tractor, but our hens, we put them in our barn for the winter, which works out really well now, especially with the avian flu that we're dealing with. So they're a little bit more quarantined that way, which is right. good. Well, and in all honesty, I have kids that participate in 4-H and it never fails. We have so many animals that we run out of space to put them. And we've used our tractors inside the barn uh, yes. just to put them in a safe, uh, warmer space. So they're great for transition units, depending on the size of your setup and where the space you have to put them in. Totally. And then to add to that, you can use them as a quarantine. If you have a couple of birds that are sick or injured, our tiniest tractor, the mini, we have used the mini for mama hens and their baby chicks. We've used the mini for a bird that's been injured and just needs her own space. Like there's a lot of versatility there when you have, when you have options, just like you said, when you have those extra housing options. Right. And I think a lot of people think about, you know, I need housing for my flock when they get started, but some don't think about, well, what if, what am I going to do if I have a chicken acting a little off and I need to separate it? Or what do I do if I have a broody hen that mm -hmm. wants to sit on eggs? How do I keep that mama hen safe with her babies? And you have a solution for that. You've created um, a brooder setup 
correct? Like a broody box? Yes, yes. So I absolutely love using broody hens to hatch chicks to grow my flock. But I'll tell you, I've been through so many like flimsy cardboard boxes and oversized dog crates where I'm like getting down on my hands and knees to like clean it out. Ugh, I never had had a durable option for a broody hen that, you know, she felt completely safe and secure. She had everything she needed in one place. And to me, that was a nice nest, a spot to dust bathe. That's really important, even when they're broody and a spot to eat and drink. So again, just like the chicken tractor, I turned to my engineering husband and I'm like, what can we do? Can, could we do a brooder box? And we talked through all the necessities and he designed it in CAD. We took that Menards trip and within three hours, we had a brooder box with everything that mama had needed all in one place. And I love this little design because I always would find that hens get spooked, especially after you move them, if you're trying to get them out of the coop with their flock so they can sit on the eggs all by themselves. You never want to keep a broody hen with her flock because she will forget where those (laughs) eggs are. She will. And then you you're back at ground zero after she's been incubating, you know? So I love this design because you can safely box her into her nesting area. And I like to do that for the first 12 hours, just get her settled. It's a very common thing people do when they have their broody hens to just box her in for a little bit, let her get settled, let her butt warm up. Yeah. (laughs) And then you get to open this little door and she has a spot to dust bathe. She has a spot to eat, spot to drink everything she needs. So we have hatched out, I want to say seven clutches of eggs with the brooder box and our hatch rate has been 80%, which I think is great. Yeah. I think that really speaks to mama hen is comfortable. She has everything she needs. She has enough space. So we sell those build plans as well. It's like the maternity suite for chickens. (laughs) I need that. (laughs) I think everybody needs a, a special place. She shed, broody box. Whatever. Yes. We need it our is space. the ultimate she shed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All um, right. Well, a lot of our customers know that we as a hatchery like to give back to the community. And a way that we do that is by offering a free Meyer meal maker chick that customers can add to their chick orders uh, when placing their order. And the hope is that they will raise that bird and Um, donate either eggs or meat from that bird to somebody in need. Now, I was reading that you also like to give back. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. So with every purchase of the Brooder Box build plan, we donate a percentage of sales to the Chickens and Littles program over at Loveland Acres Farm. And Loveland Acres is Loveland Acres Farm is a community centered farm in southeastern Wisconsin, and it's run by the amazing black female farmer Scarlett Salamone. I just love Scarlett. She is a force. So this farm program, it seeks out willing teachers or families that want to hatch their own eggs with their students or their children so that their kids can experience the miracle of chicks firsthand. And I remember like chicks in my second grade classroom was like one of the most magical experiences as a kid. So through this program, participants are set up with an incubator with instructions and eggs to start and go through their own hatching experience. And then upon hatch, those chicks are returned to Loveland Acres Farm and they become a part of the next year's laying flock. And what I love about this program is that it nurtures and educates our next generation of chicken lovers. That is so special. I know um, we have a lot of teachers that contact us because they live in the city and they want to bring that experience to their their classroom. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's just something that an experience the kids will never forget. That's for sure. It's true. I mean, I'm I'm 33 and I still remember that feeling of that little little pipped egg and thinking, oh my gosh, there's a chick inside. You know, right. it's magical. the miracle of life right before yes. your eyes. <laughs> yes. Let's talk a little bit about the business side. It's inspiring to to see how you seek the help of other farmers to run a successful business through online marketing. What do you think is most important to someone just starting out with a homestead business? So my my motto has always been, take it seriously. Take yourself seriously, even if you're starting out. And to me, that means you form an LLC to protect yourself. You keep track of those expenses. You keep track of those receipts. 
you fully understand what are the net profits from those products that you'd like to sell. You fully understand what your local cottage food laws are. So you don't get in trouble for selling something that is technically illegal. You'd be surprised there. It varies state by state. Know, know your laws, take it seriously. And then lastly, and most importantly in my book is have a marketing plan. <laughs> I love marketing. Online marketing is my jam and successful homesteading businesses they're not an accident. They are months, if not years of laying that solid foundation for yourself and your homestead, taking yourself seriously. So helping homestead and farm business owners with their marketing is a huge passion of mine. And I could spend an entire podcast episode <laughs> talking about it. But if you are homestead business curious, I just recommend listeners head over to my website at greenwillowhomestead.com and you can check out some of those extra resources I offer. That's pretty amazing. Now, lastly, what are three tips you would give a new chicken owner? Mm, this is such a good question. So first, order the basic chicken medical supplies that you need in case of an emergency or sickness ahead of time. Like being stuck in an emergency with the stuff, with not having the stuff you need is such a heart-wrenching experience, speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the bare minimum in my book is have things like electrolytes, wound care supplies, lice and mite prevention, and natural supplements. I know, Meyer, you guys have great stuff on your website under the feed, treats, and supplements category. Yeah, we have too. a whole category for health and wellness. Yes. And I, so things I know that you guys have, Duristat. I love Duristat. VetRx, Pure Planet Poultry Spray, the Green Goo Wound Care Line. Then I know Fresh Eggs Daily, she's got some amazing natural supplements that you can give to your girls to just boost their overall health weekly or daily. Have that stuff on hand before you bring those chicks home. Yeah, <laughs> That's important. be prepared. <laughs> yes, yes. And then, and speaking of being prepared, my second tip is have a plan for your chicken coop before you order your chicks. <laughs> Great idea. So, <laughs> even better, you know, if you've got it built before you place that order button on the Meyer Hatchery website, that's awesome. Because I know so many chicken owners who tell me like sheepishly how they were scrambling to get something together for their pullets in the spring because time just gets away from you. And as I've said previously, poor housing, it leads to predation. You know, you, you make shortcuts that end up costing you more time and money in the long run. And the last thing you want is to lose a hen. Right. So, and then and you don't want to spend six weeks brooding these adorable chicks to the point where they're ready to go outside and then you suffer that loss. That is just devastating. Yes, it is. And then on that note, I think my last tip is when you own chickens, you will come face to face with those hard choices, those hard experiences around death. And I think that a lot of beginner chicken owners don't realize this when they get started. Like for me personally, I just went through the ringer that first year. My very first clutch of chicks I ordered from Tractor Supply, I had a blind chick and I tried my best to keep her alive, but I ended up having to put her down. And then as I shared here, we dealt with those predators that took out some of my favorite hens and roosters that first year. And then that same year, in the span of a month, I had two hens get impacted crop. I had to teach myself how to operate on both of them in hopes of saving their lives. And I was able to save the first one. She is still with us. Her name is Beyonce. She is a rock star. That is the best name. <laughs> <laughs> but the second hen didn't make it. And you know, these these situations, the emotions that come with them, the learning curve that comes with them, they're so challenging and they will test you. And I always like remind myself of what Brene Brown says, you have to have a soft front and a strong back when it comes to this stuff. So you, you can't let these inevitably hard experiences with raising animals leave you feeling defeated or bitter. You just, you got to be prepared for them emotionally. You have to know that this, this is inevitable. It will come up. And I think it gives you an, a, a newfound respect for the animal and the whole process. It really gives you that Absolutely. respect for life in general. I agree well, wholeheartedly. Well, Kelsey, it was such a pleasure chatting with you today. Uh, you are just a wealth of knowledge. I'm so excited that Meyer Hatchery has partnered with you uh, to carry your A-frame chicken tractor build plans. I am going to link in the show notes below um, to those plans directly on our site provided by Green Willow Farm. Your plans are beautiful, and I know they are going to set a lot of people up for success when they get their chicks this year. 
Thanks so much, Amanda. This has been so fun. I could talk about chickens for hours. (laughs) You and me both, sister. (laughs) And with that, I thank you for listening to The Coop. Be sure to subscribe. And if you'd be so kind, drop us a review. Have a poultry related question or topic you would like us to cover? We want to hear from you. Send us an email to podcast at meyerhatchery.com.